My name is Yaakov ben Israel, and I'm the elder priest of the Culture Center of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel. We're located at 31, 3901A Covington Highway in Decatur, Georgia. First of all, I'd like to thank you for all the support uh, of those of you who have uh, supported this, uh, this ministry. And uh, we really, really appreciate it, and we still, and, and we, what we're trying to do with what we have done this season as we put together some programs that uh, some of you have written in uh, uh, concerning, uh, uh, concerning, and we're trying to give you that, that, that information so you can understand just what's going on in the world today. Uh, you have to understand that Yahweh said he don't do anything till he tell his servants the prophets first. And our problem is we've been taught to read a lot of things in the New Testament but we don't read the, uh, the prophets. And uh, Christ himself said, search the law and the prophets, because they are they which testify of me. And people don't do that today. What we do is we go to church and we, we read some things that was actually said by the apostles, but where the problem come in is the interpretation of a thing. Uh, uh, and to show you that, um, most people are talking about going off to heaven, but Christ himself said, no man goes to heaven except him who came down from heaven. So it's a lot of things that, uh, that we may hear that we put stock in, but that's simply because we consider this to be knowledge. But if you do the right research on it, you might be find out that it's knowledge so-called. In other words, it's the doctrine of men. And then you have to look around and find out uh, why is it that so many churches have so many different doctrines, but they're all teaching out of the same book. Something is wrong with that. Something is erratically wrong with that. And what I find today is that most people, uh, uh, what they have, Yahweh said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That the first thing he blessed and sanctified. And the first thing that the Christian did, the Europeans did in uh, 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 312 AD, Emperor Constantine and Pope St. Leo, the first thing they did was make Christianity the legal religion of the Roman Empire, and then they changed the Sabbath day from Saturday to the day Sunday, which is the first day of the week. And man has been doing these things ever since, but it's not what Yahweh said. As a matter of fact, when you get into Isaiah chapter 66 and read about what Yahweh had to say pertaining to uh, uh, the first resurrection, once the Messiah come and set up his kingdom, he said, from one Sabbath to another and from one new moon to another shall all flesh come to worship before me. So we can very well see that uh, just like that was the first, the Sabbath day was the first thing that Yahweh blessed and sanctified, we can very well see that even when the Mashiach come and set up his kingdom on this earth for a thousand years, man will still uh, keep the laws that was given at Mount Sinai. It was a covenant of salt. And uh, uh, this is why Christ told us to search the law and the prophets. But man uh, does things the way that man chooses to do things. And this is why sin is destroying the whole earth. And it has to do with one thing, money. Money. Everybody is about that money. And our people got less of it, less of it than anybody. I mean the people that need it. Sure, we have a, a few brothers uh, that's went out there into that entertainment world and is has made their mark and so forth and got filthy rich, you know. But as far as the common people is concerned, the common people are still having some very, very serious problems simply because uh, the, the monies that the rich get rich off the poor. 
The rich don't pray, pray on each other, they pray on the poor. And most of us, we have to understand that we live from paycheck to paycheck. So when you hear a lot of things, don't just put in the stock in what you hear. Uh, download it. And then go and get your book and do some research on it uh, uh, and see what you come up with. And you might come more, more than likely, whatever you hear, you're going to come up with a different story if you go and read the whole story instead of uh, bits and pieces of it. Uh, the phone number here is 404 404-873-1349. 404-873-1349. Four nine. Uh, if, if you want, if you like to, you can call in and chit chat a little bit. You don't have to talk about what I, I, uh, uh, what I, what I come out here talking about. We can talk about what's on your mind, and uh, and, and 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 maybe uh, we can help somebody else to understand a, a few things. And that's what it's all about. One teach, one teach once, because like Yahweh said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But He also said. Uh, since we resist knowledge, he's going to resist us. And most of the time we get so caught up in the, what we believe that we won't uh, uh, allow anything else to come in. In other words, we won't hear something and then go re do some research on it and find out whether these things are true or not. But, you know, it's just like the situation where people say, well, you know, Christ can come any day. No, he can't. No, he can't. Certain things, certain prophecies has to be fulfilled before the, uh, 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 the Messiah uh, has come. Uh, right now, we're in the, uh, Revelation chapter 13. And uh, if you uh, uh, keep reading the book of Revelation, the Messiah doesn't come until Revelation 19th uh, chapter. And it's, uh, it's a time span in there with, that we have to deal with. It has to deal with the blowing of the trumpets of, and the pouring out of the vials in the book of Revelation. And uh, a lot of people say that's a scary book. But if you read the book of Daniel, Daniel interpreted all of the symbols that's in the book of Revelation. Well, the angel interpreted and told Daniel what they were. So it's very easy to understand the book of Revelation once you go back and read the book of Daniel. And you might want to uh, check that out because there's some things in there that's written that none of the churches are, 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 are talking about today. Uh, all the nations talk about going up to heaven and staying up in heaven seven years and then coming back down here and ruling on the uh, 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 on the earth with the Messiah and so forth. Biggest lie ever been told. You can't prove that in the book uh, uh, any place. What the Messiah was promised, so when you read the prophets, the Messiah was promised that what the Messiah's was, uh, job is to do is to come and save his people out of captivity, put on all the power on the earth, and set up a governmental system, a righteous governmental system uh, uh, upon the earth for a thousand years. I think we got a call on the line. Go ahead, caller. You on the air? Go ahead, caller. I can't hear the caller. Hello? I can't hear the caller. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Bring the call up a little bit. Go ahead, sister. Yes, Keep on my talking. My question is about tithing. Yes, ma'am. Would you expound on what the Bible, uh, your view on what the Bible has to say about tithing for today? Okay, well, uh, uh, first of all, what you have to understand is uh, Christ said, one joke, a one tittle shall not pass from the law until all be fulfilled. Well, all haven't been fulfilled. You have to understand the law uh, 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 that was done away with in order to uh, understand uh, about tithing. Uh, the law that was done away with was the animal sacrifice, okay? And the Le Levitical priesthood was set aside in order to make uh, uh, the whole 12 tribes of Israel a priesthood that would be set up on the earth. So according to the law, you're supposed to pay tithes. According to the law, you're supposed to pay tithes. But if you're not under the law, you're under grace, then why are you paying tithes? See, that's the question. If you're not under the law, and you, but you're under grace, why do you pay tithes? Now, when I was a young man coming up, uh, the church lived off free will offerings. 
They built the church, they built the parsonage beside the church, and that's where the preacher and his family stayed. They lived off free will offer. Whatever the congregation uh, uh, gave them, that's what they, uh, that's what they, uh, they subsided off. But then, uh, uh, about maybe 30, a little better than 30 years ago, uh, 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 Or Roberts and Kenneth Copeland and Jimmy Swaggart, those t- televangelists, and uh, that Shula out there from California, they got to talking about uh, tithing, 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 bring the tithes in the storehouse. And then our people, then now they forget all of the other law, but they go back in the, in the book of Exodus and pull out 10%. And most of the churches, you got to show them a W-2 form. So the thing of it is with tithing, my sister, tithing is written in the law. Okay, tithing is written in the law. So if you can't do part of the law and then don't do the whole law. Now I give you a good example of that. Yahweh gave us uh, a holy days to keep in Leviticus 23rd chapter. Well, the church set up their own days and say, well, we don't have to do that, but we're going to do these over here that our father set in place. So they didn't tithe for all these years, and then here in the latter half of the last century, that's when them shysters figured out how, how, how they can get more money, and they start dealing with it, sister. But tithing is uh, 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 legal, but you can't do part of the law and don't do the other part. Uh, I think we got another call on, on, on the line. Know what is wrong with paying tithes? What I is wrong paid with paying? I have paid my 10%, and I have truly been blessed. So, mm-hmm. what is wrong with paying tithes? Well, is it good to pay tithes, or is it bad to pay tithes? Well, you, it, 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 if you pay in tithes, you're supposed to pay tithes. It's according to the law. It's according to the law that you pay tithes. But what I'm saying is this, my sister what's the sense of paying tithes? And then going to church on the wrong day. See? You can't do one wrong. You can't uh, uh, sin and then pay the tithes to cover the sin. It don't work like that. You see, if you're going to do uh, uh, part of the law, you got to do the whole law. Now, the church has said, because Paul said we're not under the law, we're under grace, they, put, they took out that one little verse. One little verse. And then they say, well, uh, 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 see, we don't have to keep the law. Well, tithing is written in the law. So either we got to keep it or we don't have to keep it. And if you know, I don't know whether you notice it or not, to show you how important the law is and what these folks think about Yahweh's law, they've taken the Ten Commandments out of the judicial system. Now check that out. Check that out. The Ten Commandments cover 613 laws, statutes, and judgments, which is a complete way of life for people to live. See, that's what Yahweh brought us over here slave because he gave it to our fathers and we didn't do what he said do. And uh, 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 he had us sent over here as slave. Let me read you something here uh, out of the book of uh, 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 Luke. This is uh, St. Luke. Uh, I think I need to pick this up in Matthew first and then come back to uh, uh, Luke and pick this up. This is uh, Matthew chapter 24. And uh, 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 I'm going to pick this up. At verse 4. Now, uh, verse 3, it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the world? And Yahshua said unto him, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. Christ said, The broad way lead to destruction. Okay, Christianity is the largest religion that it is. And you know who started it? Europeans. It wasn't the Jews that started that. It was the Europeans up in in Antioch and Syria. Read your Bible. Read the book of Acts. Uh, uh, It was the Europeans that called the apostles Christian. But Paul said, I'm a Jew of Tarsus. Christ was born king of the Jews. See, uh, uh, when you go in, 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 in the Bible and read what the angel Gabriel told uh, 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 Mary when he went to her, he said, And the Adonai Elohim shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there should be no end. So what the Gentiles did was, the Gentiles, uh, 
Don't go in here. First, first of all, don't go in here looking for God because you ain't going to find him in here. This book is history book. It's the, it starts with in the beginning, right? And it comes right down through history and end up with the Messiah coming and setting up a kingdom, a new city, city Jerusalem. It's a history book. And when you go and read this book, you find out that Yahweh gave one nation of people his law and told them to teach that to the whole world. You know what? Those people were black people according to the Old Testament. They weren't Africans. And when you read in 70 AD and see what happened when General Titus invaded Jerusalem, it told you it was at Passover and he killed 1.3 million Jews. There was no weapons in the city and the last 97,000 they rounded up and sold to the Ethiopians to work in the salt mines. Uh, 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 but I think we got another call on the line. Uh, go ahead, call. You on there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The scripture says uh, that God created man in his own image and likeness. Mm -hmm. uh, now, my question before you answer my question is, I share with you that I do serve the Sabbath on the sixth day, on the seventh day, which is Saturday. Mm -hmm. Saturday. Mm -hmm. The question I have with you is, when it said God created man in his own image and likeness, mm -hmm. how do you interpret that? I don't understand what you're saying. Okay. If God created man in his own image and likeness, uh -huh. the word man prophetically means male and female. So God is a cause and effect. So if you got God in you, then you recognize God in me. So we as the so-called uh, African Americans don't understand that because they don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. uh, the word Native American means birthplace, mm -hmm. means that you are born here. Mm -hmm. Like Esau and Jacob once sold his birthright. we got many African Americans that sold their birthright. So what I'm saying to you today is that uh, uh, when we don't understand something, then we, then we, then we learn to uh, sup with one another, means to reason together. Okay, okay, and, uh, okay. I understand it. I understand that part of it. I understand that part of it. I understand that part of it. Now, how, what was you connecting the Sabbath with on that? The uh, what now? Uh, you connected the Sabbath. Uh, uh, in, uh, the Sabbath, the Sabbath is, uh, when you say Sabbath, when you, you, you go, to, you got four days, God created the habitation, uh, took him five days. The sixth day, he created man. And on the Sabbath, Seventh day was the Sabbath, the day to rest. Mm -hmm. That's the day you put aside to, uh, to, to worship God. Mm -hmm. And so we can't get caught up into European thinking. We got to go by what God give us. He give you a revelation. He give me a revelation. Okay, okay, so I right, got to stand right. On that. Okay, I see where you're going at now, brother. I see. I, I just didn't un the way you put it in the beginning. I just didn't. Uh, I will give you my number so you can show you we know we can sit down and talk together. Yeah, what well, I'm gonna I tell you one, what. Two, wait, five, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm gonna give you mine. I got your number. Okay, well then call me. I don't need yours. You call well, me. Well, we can't. We, uh, uh, see, I always remember two things. We can, we, we can, we can talk together. But you got my number, so but give me a call. At the same time, we can't be arrogant. Be humble. I humble you. I humble myself. I give understand my that too, brother. So we, okay, I understand, I understand your point. You got my number and call me, and that's all it is to it. How much more humble that I can be? Uh, as I was saying before, uh, 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 let's read some things that the Messiah told uh, 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 his apostles and, and see if we're doing these things, if we're watching for these things. I uh, said, and Yahshua answered and said unto him, unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Well, look around. There's a Christian church almost on every block. And sin is running rampant all over the earth. Y'all, we got all these diseases coming up on man. Uh, uh, the global warming is destroying the whole earth. We got children all over the earth that's, that's hungry and dying from diseases and so forth. Why? Because of sin. Sin is running rampant upon the earth. There's wars all over every place, uh, everywhere. People, uh, war is politics. We let's understand that. It's pe wars all over the earth because everybody want to do what they want to do, but don't nobody want to do it like Yahweh said do. You know why? They're not under the law. They're under grace. They're under man's law. Let me, uh, let me finish this up. For many shall come in my name saying, I am the Messiah and shall deceive many. 
And you shall hear wars and rumors of wars, see that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That's what happened in 70 AD when General Titus entered Jerusalem and destroyed our people and sold the, last, the remnant of, a, of us to the Ethiopians to work in the salt mines. Uh, uh, verse 11, and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity, which is sin, shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We quick to attack each other because, because of how, what we think and what we feel and because we think we're so much holier than somebody else. But he that shall endure to the end shall be saved. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, spoken to stand in the holy place, Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee, flee to the mountain. Let them which be on the housetops come not down to take anything out of his house. And woe to them that are with child and to them who give suck in these days. But pray you that your flight be not in winter, neither in summer, nor on the Sabbath day. Now let's pick up what Luke had to say about this uh, 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 in, the, uh, in, the, in the end of that. He says, but, uh, this is St. Luke chapter 21 and verse 20 says, and when you shall see Jerusalem compass about with armies, the same thing that Matthew uh, quoted, then know you that the desolation thereof is not. Then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are on, on the midst uh, of her turn uh, not back to take anything out of the country. Now, he also says in verse 24, it says, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive unto all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Euro Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So this is what's coming up with the EU. It's the Gentiles that gave us Christianity. It's the Gentiles that came over here out of Europe and uh, 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 murdered off the Indians and took their country, then went and got them some slaves and recorded the worst slavery in history. Now we Christian. What kind of sense does that make? Do we think their God is stronger than ours? See, all the things was given to our people. We went and taught them, and then they got rid of us, and now they got it, and making big bucks off it, fighting wars all, the way, all around the earth, talking about uh, onward Christian soldiers marching off to war. Right. Uh, I think we got another call on the line. Go ahead, call you in there. Hello, brother. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. I um, I was had a question uh, about the first caller. Mm -hmm. She made a comment about you know, she paid her tithe, mm -hmm. and she's very blessed. And from my reading of the scripture, and connecting that with what people call blessed today. I remember that Satan took Messiah on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you bow down and serve me, then I will give you all, I will give you all this. Mm -hmm. And most people look at uh, riches of the world mm -hmm. as being a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I was this, my question is like, if just because you have money, does that mean you're blessed? Just because, you know, like you bow down to Satan, he give you power hmm. to run some things, do that mean that you're blessed? Brother, that's that prosperity doctrine. That's what that is, that prosperity doctrine. That's why these people walk right here talking about they claim 10, 5, they got a... They got a, 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 a 10,000 uh, people in their membership. And how many of them do you know? Man, look at it this way. Every soul that come into a, in the congregation I attend, I know everybody. I know all the children. You know why? There's going to be a judgment. I have to know what to feed these people. And the way that I do that is through the word and the situation that's coming up. I let Yahweh take care of the business and keep myself out of it, you see. But... I'm going to have to give an account at judgment for each one of these people. 
Now, if I got 10,000 folks, and I don't know but 10 of them, how can I give an account? See, that church, that, that Christian thing, is just what it was in the beginning. What you need to do is go back and read the foundation of it. See, we just grab on the stuff because we like a nice building and all that other garbage that go along with it. See, but go back and read the history of the Christian church. You'll find out they fought wars all over Europe. They called them crusades. The Knights Templar and all them queens and kings and things, the white folks over there, they fought wars all over Europe and Asia, taking people land, claiming it, for, claiming it, we claiming this land here for Christ. See, then they came over here and did the same doggone thing over here and set up their governmental system, right? Yahweh gave them this power for one reason, for one reason alone, so he can destroy them. That's what he gave them all the power for. If you don't think so, let me read something to you. Uh, 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 out of uh, out of the book of uh, out of the book of Revelation, see uh, 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 about that. See, uh, people talk, but when you look up over and see, the Bible is a book on history, and the prophets tell you what's going to take place, and people aren't reading the prophets. Now, right over there in Europe today, they're sitting up the old fallen Roman Empire that fell in 476 A.D. Uh, 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 and here it is now. It's coming back up again under the name of what? The EU. I, I'll read that when we, uh, 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 when we come back. And understand one thing. The Christians control 99% of all the resources on earth. Understand that. Uh, uh, tell me Satan is behind that. He didn't give them all the riches of the earth. Why? Because of who they got over here as their captives. That's why we're doing so bad. That's why I don't none of the nations want to deal with us. Simply because of who we are. The nations know that we are Yahweh's chosen people and they know that they've destroyed us and Lucifer is, is, is trying to destroy all of our males today and we see it. We see it. Read the King Alfred plan. And, they, and, and the government tell you exactly how they plan on exterminating our people. But we still walk around here and talk about taking this yin-yang and not even knowing what's going on. The Christ said, watch it. We ain't watching for nothing. Uh, I think we got another call on, on there. Go ahead, caller. You on there. Go ahead, caller. Question is, I uh, study like I like studying the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And I like uh, chasing the European history. But my question is, those Jews that are in Israel today, is there any way they can trace them from Abraham into where they get to Jerusalem today? No, they, uh, well, let, let, let me put it to you this way, brother. You can do it, but you got to do it in, in the way that it's done. See, you got to understand what Scripture said, and you got to understand the prophets and see what happened to both of those seeds, Jacob and Esau, right? Right. Okay, now, now remember, uh, 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 Esau was the one that sold his birthright. Yes. Right? Right. Okay, now, when the land was given, Yahweh told Abraham he was going to give it to him and his seed, right? Right. Where well, the land was given to Jacob, wasn't it? Right. Okay, and the 12 tribes of Israel, Moshe brought us out of Egypt. We, we stayed down there 430 years, and Moshe brought us out of Egypt and put us up in the land of Israel, right? Right. And uh, incidentally, a lot of people don't know it, but Moses, uh, Moses was raised up in Pharaoh's house. Right. As Pharaoh's grandson. Right. Uh, 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 and the Bible tells you that the Hebrews were black people. Right. Okay. Now, Esau inherited all the land down under the land of Israel, the called uh -huh. the uh -huh. But see, what happened was, uh, in the New Testament, uh, 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 the Herodians... The Herodians that the Romans had set up, that was Esau. Uh -huh. That was them people over there now that's calling themselves the Jews. Those were the Herodians. Now, when Jerusalem fell, according to Josephus and according to world history, uh, uh, the, rem the remnant of the people, after that thing with the Masada and all of that stuff, the remnant of our people were sold to the Ethiopians who work in the mines. Right. Well, how did they come out, out, of, all, out of Europe and Asia? Huh? See, what happened was when Jerusalem fell, the Herodians didn't have nobody to rule over. So they moved up into Europe. Read your history. They moved up into Europe. Uh -huh. and, and when in 1948, 
when uh, 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 when when, when uh, they set up a government system over there, where did they came from? They came from Europe, didn't they? That's right. Yes, sir. They came from Europe. See, all you got to do is follow people history out of the Bible and in the regular history books, and you can you can put your hand you can bring your hand put your hand on the very first one of us and bring us all the way down through the Bible through world history right over here in America as slaves. That's right. So the, the Jews that are over there now, those white Jews that are there now that call themselves Jews, they are not the original Jews. Of course they're not. Okay. That's why I tell you in Re Revelation, I know the blasphemy of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Mm -hmm. See? And he told you in the book, when, when you all read the book of Obadiah and Ezekiel 38 chapter, and it's going to tell you, your brother took your place. Uh-huh. You see? It's, it's going to tell you that. And, but who set him up? Now, let's see who set him up, though, now. The Christians set him up. The Roman Catholics out of, out, out of Europe and these protesters from over here, they were the power that went in the game, all the intelligence, the weaponry and everything they, uh, uh, they needed, and went in there and helped them take that uh, land from the Palestinians who had moved in there uh, when the Arabs made their sweep of the Middle East during the, uh, uh, during the 1300s. That's right, but, they, but sooner or later, they're going to have to get out of there. Oh, yeah, uh, they, they, uh, they uh, brother, uh, uh, they're going into captivity on us, brother. That's right. Once they set up this new world order, uh -huh. and, they, and, and, and they set up this last king who, pe who the Pope going to tell is the Messiah, uh -huh. once they set him up, it's them people over there that's going to sacrifice to him. That's right. Okay? It's, it's them that's going to sacrifice to him. And then uh, 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 once America is destroyed, and that great, great three and a half years of tribulation period come upon our people, brother. That's what's going to make us turn, uh, know something's going on. Because these folks here, man, read the King Alpha plan. It's on the internet. It comes from the office of the Secretary of the Interior of the United States government. All, and it lists all of, uh, of the governmental offices in the country. Mm -hmm. You know what they say they're going to do? When this economic revolution comes, brother. They're going to they gonna send our leaders out there to uh, try to get it squashed. If they don't get it done within the first hour, they're going to put them in, the, in, 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 in on lockdown and start locking us up, putting us on their military bases they close, brother. Mm -hmm. See, they already got it planned, see? Oh, yeah. But see, in the church, what they got us so busy looking up, oh, I got to make it. I got to get me some money, child. I need some money. I'm going to pay my tithes so I will get a blessing. You was breathing before you paid the tithes. That's right. See? But what we looking for, we looking for some natural increase. That's right. See? You know why? We want to be like the Joneses. Mm -hmm. We want to be somebody. You see, but it ain't all like that. You always said the poor you always have with you. Okay, what, what, would we ever come to the truth? There's going to be a time that we have to repent and turn around because God said he, he came to us first and we didn't receive it, so he gave it to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. But he, when will we ever come to the truth? Well, our brother's going to be doing that great tribulation period. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let, let me, let me uh, read you something here out of the book of Revelations. Revelation 7 now. Uh, 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 the fifth seal uh, was opened in 1969. Mm -hmm. So the next seal is to be opened is the one that Lucifer gets thrown out of heaven, okay? Right. Okay. Now let me read something to you right just after Lucifer gets thrown out of heaven. See, uh, let me read something to you. It says, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel sending from the east having the seal of the living God. Mm -hmm. And he cried with a loud voice unto the angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and sea, saying, Don't hurt anything, neither the seed nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. Right? Right. Seal all the servants, right? Right. All these folks walk around here talking about their service of God, right? Uh -huh. Listen. See, folks don't read. We get selective reading in the church. That's right. Listen to this, verse 4. And I heard the number of them that were sealed, and there were sealed 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Uh -huh. See? That's before the great tribulation come upon our period, up, up on our people. Now, uh, and, and, and uh, because Lucifer is going, Lucifer is out for one purpose. To get our people destroyed, man. Right, Can't true. you see we almost, we're being replaced in here by Hispanics? Yeah. 
Can't you see we're almost at a destruction? Now let me read something going to happen to you uh, out of the book of Revelation when Satan gets cast out of heaven, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, but this is Revelation 12 in verse 13. It says, And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman who brought forth the man-child. Well, who was the woman that brought forth the man-child? The 12 tribes of Israel that brought forth the Messiah. Right. Okay. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half time from the face of the serpent. Well, when you read Isaiah, Isaiah and Jeremiah tell you that Russia is going to destroy America in one hour and one day. And Yahweh say, going to get us out of here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And take us to the wilderness. Okay. Because ain't nobody going to let no 50 or 60 million of us in their country, brother, because we ain't going to follow nobody. Uh, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after a woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. When America get destroyed, brother, and that tsunami is on that water, that's what it's for. It's loose for doing all this, man. Okay. Carrying out Yahweh's word. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was angry with the woman, Israel, right? Uh -huh. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed, right. which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yahshua, the Messiah. That's who Satan is making war against. He's making war against our people, man. That's right. And let me ask you one more question. Okay, the 37th, 37th, 37th chapter of Ezekiel, mm -hmm. with these dry bones. Dry bones and valleys. When they raise them. Is, is, is those our seed rising up? Yes, sir. Didn't our he, children. Didn't he tell you? He told you that. Uh, that's right. Go ahead. In Ezekiel 37, he told you that. Uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, let me get it there, brother. Okay. See, everybody talk that yin yang. We're going to be flying off the never never land. Uh uh. No, you ain't. Uh -huh. You can't prove that in this book here. Uh -uh. You can't prove that in this book. And if you don't believe it, bring your preacher down and we can sit down and we can talk. Uh, uh, out of this book now. Now, what you got to think of what you say. The book got to be the final word. Uh, let, me, let me read. Uh, 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 this is in Ezekiel 37 uh, in verse 10. It said, so I, you remember he told him, said, prophesied all these dry bones, right? Yep, that's right. He said, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet in a exceeding great army. Then said he unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. That's what he said. That's who the bones were. He said, uh, uh, and uh, it says, uh, Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Adonai Elohim, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up to your graves and bring you back to the land of Israel. He didn't say he's going to take you into heaven. See? Okay. Uh, uh, uh. And you shall know that I am Yahweh when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it and performed it, saith Yahweh. That's how of Israel, brother Paul said, glory and honor to the Jew first. Didn't he? Well, if he said that, then how can the Gentiles be whisked off the earth, off the heaven? And Yahweh, Yahweh told his holy prophet, we're going back to the land of Israel. He's going to open your graves and take you back to the land of Israel. Understand one thing. These Christians and these Muslims, they have almost destroyed the whole earth. The air in your cities ain't fit to breathe. People have to buy water. They got all kind of diseases and, and killer bees and mosquitoes carrying disease. Everything all over the earth. Uh, uh, now they scared of that doggone bird flu that it's going to break out and go to humans and everything. Why? I'm not afraid of those things. You know why? I believe the angels will be our way to protect me because I tried to walk in his word. I fall down just like everybody else do. But I recognize that and get up and say, I ain't going to do that no more. And that's the end of that. That's the end of that. You know, none of us are righteous over much, but the thing of it is, is this. Yahweh said he don't do anything till he tell his service to prophets first. And I talk about a whole lot of things that a whole lot of people listening to ain't got the foggiest ideas written in the book. You know why? They never read it. It's a story. It's the history of the world. Get in the beginning 
and start in the beginning, read the whole book. And by the time you get to the New Testament, you know something is wrong. You know yourself something is wrong. But see, we don't want to do that because we've been given up to tradition. We like worshiping, uh, 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 worshiping the sun on December 25th, thinking it's Christ's birthday. And according to the Bible, Christ was born in the summer. See, we like all of that garbage. You know why? We got it from our slave master. I think we got another call on the line. Go ahead, call to you in there. Go ahead, call her. I got a Hello? caller. Hello? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, I have one comment, and I would like for you to uh, uh, expound on it. I have thought about it a long time. A lot of people, particularly our people, I don't believe, and I may be wrong, but I don't believe they understand that Jesus himself Yahshua had nothing to do with the beginning of the Christian religion. Correct. That was started by St. Paul, who himself was not even one of Jesus' disciples. I, as, as I understand it, Jesus had been crucified before Paul came along. Mm -hmm. And Paul was a very brilliant man, and he went around and started this, what we call Christian religion, uh, based on what he thought Jesus was all about. But he was not himself alone, and he did not sit at the feet of, foot of Jesus, and he did not, uh, he was not one of Jesus' disciples. I would like for you to comment on that, if you would, now hang up and listen to your commentary. Okay. Well, number one, Paul was sent to the Europeans. Uh, let's understand one thing. Uh, Yahweh is the God of all flesh, and he's going to save all flesh. It's a government system that's being set up. And uh, uh, after the Messiah, we had this thing, whole thing. The Messiah came. Yahshua came and walked with our people for three and a half years. And then after his resurrection, we had the, uh, uh, the church among ourselves for ten whole years. We had to get things set up among ourselves. Then once we got things set up, that's when the angel of Yahweh sent uh, uh, Peter to Cornelius. See, he was, he was opening the door for the Gentiles. Cornelius was an Italian. So he went to him, but see, that wasn't Peter's job. Peter had to feed the other uh, uh, apostles. So what he did was he had already raised up Paul, and he sent Paul over there, but Paul did not teach them Christianity. See, that's where, uh, uh, that's what we got, uh, 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 we got something there that ain't, ain't, ain't quite right. Paul uh, uh, did not teach Christianity. If you read it, what it says is this, the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch, but who was it that called them Christian? It was the white folks. That's who called them Christian. But let me go a little further with this. Paul taught them. What Paul taught them was Judaism. What they came up with, now if you get in the book, of, in the seven churches in Revelation, if you read them, the Messiah had something against all those churches. They, he had told them they had set up their own laity and everything. You see, they were beginning what had become uh, an idea in one church. They had set it up in, as another church and was sitting their ministers out to do these things, and they was told that they couldn't do that. Oh, salvation, we had to get, they had to get this through us. This is why Paul, Barnabas, Silas, even Peter went uh, 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 one time. Uh, uh, it was, uh, these brothers was going back and forth, checking on each other, making sure things was right. So Paul did not teach Christianity. Uh, uh, and to show you that, there, uh, the people were being grieved because they was called Christian. Peter told him, said, look, man, stop. Don't, don't let, let no, what people call you uh, excite you. Don't be worried about that. Just go and do what you had to do. But let me read something to you that, uh, that uh, 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 Paul, had to, uh, Paul had to say about that. See, uh, Paul kept all the feast days. Everything that came up in Jerusalem, Paul kept the feast day. But see, people don't want, don't want to do that today. What people want to do is uh, uh, people want to set up their own thing. Uh, let me read something to you. Uh, uh, this is in Acts chapter 18. Now, this is uh, in the year 54. Now, remember, the Messiah had been dead many years then. And this is in the year 54. Paul said, uh, 
Uh, this is uh, uh, Acts 18 and verse uh, 18. It said, And Paul, after this tarried yet a, a good while, and then took leave of his brethren and said this unto Syria. And, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having his head shown in Sanchia, for he had a vow. Right. He had a, a natural vow. And, and his vow was over with, so he shaved his head according to the law. So you see, Paul was still keeping the law and all this stuff now. Uh, and he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. And when they desired him to tarry a long time with them, he consented not, but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that comes up in Jerusalem. Why? Because we had three feast days a year that all the mayors were required to appear. And Paul was going back up to Jerusalem uh, 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 to keep one of, those, uh, one of those feast days. Now, let me, uh, if I can find this, let me read you something else, uh, 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 what, Paul had, uh, what Paul had to say uh, 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 to the people. This is in uh, uh, Acts chapter 13. And verse 16, see, Acts is the first 30 years of the church. The Bible is in time spans, and that's the way you got to read it. You can't go in there and read a verse here and read a verse there and take it, try to put it together. don't work like that. If the prophets don't put it together, then it's wrong. Uh, I'm going to pick this up at uh, uh, Acts chapter 13, and I'm going to start this at verse uh, 16. It says, uh, then Paul stood up and beckoned with his hand and said, You men of Israel and you that fear God, give audience. So he was talking to our people and talking to the Gentiles. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people uh, when they dwelt as strangers in Egypt and with a high arm brought them out of it. And about that time, of he, 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness, okay? And then he goes on down to talk about how the kingdom was set up. He said, when John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance unto all the people of Israel. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, whom think that you I, I am? I am not he, but behold, there come one after me whose shoes I am not worthy to lack, unlatch. So uh, uh, here we see that Paul was still talking about the baptism. He was still talking about Israel giving all the holy things of Yahweh to do. But see, man don't want to deal with these things. What man want to do, Paul didn't teach nothing new. What, what happened was the Gentiles grabbed it. Now remember, Emperor Nero killed Peter. He killed Paul. He exiled John the Revelator to the Isle of Patmos, and there was a great persecution against our people because of what we was teaching. But we wasn't teaching our, our Christianity. We was teaching the same thing that we had been practicing all our lives. The only difference was no more animal sacrifice. That's what it was because of the impossibility uh, 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 of animal blood uh, 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 to take away man's sin. So. Uh, what you have to do is you have to make sure that when you read this book that you understand who Paul was. Now, I'm going into Acts chapter, uh, chapter 19. Now, this is 56 years after Christ was resurrected from the dead. Now, remember, it was 30-some-odd 30 some odd years ago that the disciples had been called Christians. Well, 20 some are that they had been called Christian by them Gentiles in, in, in Syria. But let me read something to you that Paul had to say. This is in uh, uh, Acts chapter 19, and I'm going to pick this up at uh, uh, verse, uh, verse 33. It says, And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him for forward, and Alexander beckoned with his hands, and would have made a defense unto the people. But when he knew that he was a Jew, with all with one accord, for about two hours cried out, Great is Diana, the goddess of the Ephesians. So they knew that, uh, 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 that Paul was a Jew of Tarsus. Now, I'm going to read you something else uh, that was about Paul that a lot of people don't know. Uh, uh, this is in uh, chapter, uh, chapter 21, and I'm going to pick this at uh, verse 37. It says, And as Paul was led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto you who said, Can you speak Greek? 
Are you not that Egyptian? Check that out. Now, we know the people in Egypt now are not the original Egyptians. Those Arabs that went in there during the 13th century. The original Egyptians are the Ethiopians. Okay? And you see what they thought Paul was? They thought Paul was an Ethiopian. But every time we see a picture of Paul anywhere, them white folks got him painted. That's white boy, ain't it? Okay. Okay. He said, are not you that Ethiopian which, uh, which before in these days made an uproar and led out about into the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers? But Paul said, I am a man which uh, am a Jew of Tarsus. See? Paul was still saying he was a Jew. Just because the people called him Christians don't mean that they were Christians. And what Paul actually taught the people is not what's being taught in the church today. Because Paul let them know there's going to be a judgment. You're going to be judged by your every word and your every deed. How? According to the laws of God. See? And that's what man don't want to deal with. Man said we can't keep it. Why? There's nothing in the law that you can't keep. The reason why people say we can't keep it is because they don't know it. That's why they say we can't keep it. And uh, uh, according to the new covenant, what, what Yahweh say he's going to do, he said, I'm going to write my laws in their hearts and in their minds when I write them. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Well, what's the sense of him writing his law in your heart and your mind if you don't have to keep it? Uh, 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 that doesn't make sense. Yahweh don't do things like that. See, uh, uh, that's the way that man does things. So understand one thing, that there is going to be a judgment. And I'm going to show you something else, too. A lot of people haven't even considered this. Everybody talking about going off the never, never land, all that lie, all that lie them Gentiles been telling us and, and sent out ministers to them seminaries, and they done picked up that lie. And now everybody that died, they're talking about going to heaven. Hitler going to be there. Muhammad the... And Muhammad Ali, the Bush, everybody going to be in heaven. They're going to have a big party up there. Right, right. But let me read something to you uh, that took place uh, 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 after the Messiah's rule. We go, I'm going to read something to you that, that, that John say he saw. He says, uh, this is Revelation chapter 21, and I'm going to pick uh, this up at verse 9. It says, this is after the resurrection, after Christ reigns for a thousand years. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows for the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. Now, church say that, that's who they are. Now, John said, You come here, I'm going to show it to you. And he carried me away to the Spirit, to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from Elohim, having the glory of Elohim, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written down, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Well, the city got twelve gates, and the names on the gates are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. This came down from heaven, right? Where's everybody else's gate? If you don't go in there with Israel, you don't go into the holy city. It's just that simple. See, Yahweh gave, Christ said in uh, 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 St. John 4, 22, you don't know what you worship. We know what we worship because salvation is of the Jews. See? But people don't want to deal with that. What people want to deal with is what Massa has indoctrinated with uh, us with all down through the years. And guess what? I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how high and mighty you think you are. You can believe one thing. When them Gentiles get ready to bring you down, you coming down. Ain't no doubt about it. They bring down kings over there. Look how they went over there and brought down Saddam Hussein, didn't he? Hmm? He got more power than we got. He had more money than any of us got. You know, so don't think, don't think these people don't know who you are. This is why you think they've been breaking up our households, uh, 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 destroying our males for so long. Why? Why? Destroy the seed, then they can deal with our women. See? But if they destroy the seed, our nation is gone. And we can't leave simply because Yahweh has already promised that a remnant is going to be saved, it's going to blossom and bud and fill the face of the whole earth with fruit. He said in Isaiah 14 chapter, he said they're going to take them captives whose captives they were and they're going to rule over their oppressors. 
You Gentiles don't want us to rule over them, see, because they know how they did. Our folks, you know, I, I'm old enough to have seen strange fruit hanging on trees. I came up doing Jim Crow years, you know what I mean? So uh, uh, what goes around, come back around, but they just don't know. It's not in us to do the nations the way that they did us. What we're going to do is teach them how to walk upright in Yahweh's law and, and beat their swords and the plowshares, their spears and the pruning hooks. Nation not to lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And these folks here is mad on blood. They sports show it, and we know it. Uh, my name is Yaakov in Israel, and I'm the uh, elder priest of the Culture Center of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel. If you have any questions, my cell phone number is 404-630-0800. That's 404-630-0800. Six three zero zero eight hundred, and I'm usually up at three four o'clock in the morning. So if you got anything on your mind you want to talk about, give me a holler. Now, if you want to sit down and fuss now, and then we have to meet someplace to where you can sit down and I can make you fuss and then take this book and beat your brains out with it. But uh, 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 our time is at hand. We haven't got much time in this captivity. Y'all, we told. Uh, 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 don't call me right now, man. I'm still on the air. I hear my phone ringing. Wait till I get off the program. You guys should have left me in the car. But anyways, uh, 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 come by the Culture Center. Give me a call. And uh, if anything I've said kind of, uh, if it ticks you off, if, 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 if you grab something, do your research. Do your research. Simply because our time is near. It's almost time for our uh, delivery. This can't go on forever. Peace. Y'all will be with you. 